am here to give a very quick overview of Evernote and the approach I'm going to take and I'll go ahead and jump to my uh, desktop Evernote here um, is to just go over the top level structure. I think I can do this very quickly and I think this will generate a lot of questions and I would, I'm happy to go ahead and record new videos to answer specific questions uh, or dive into a specific notebook. Um, so uh, I think what I want to say is that uh, my primary input mechanism is on my iPhone. I mean, in fact, my primary interface to Evernote is my iPhone. I probably use the desktop version just to, when I get into mass organization mode, to empty my inbox or something like that, right? To do some uh, knowledge engineering and synthesis. That's generally when I use this desktop client. I find that the iPhone works great, and every so often if I'm on the desktop, I'll use the web client, and uh, between those three interfaces, they work awesome. I, I really don't really have a lot of complaints and I really do support Evernote for personal and business use. So um, I, I discovered that there are some groups here. I mean these are parent notebooks, right? You can see that each one has different numbers of sub notebooks inside. But I think it will suffice to go ahead and go through this linearly and I'll make some cross -ref references here and there. And um, I hope that I hope that works. So, um, the first key notebook is my coordinator notebook. This is what I call the Evernote coordinator. It's been a vision of uh, I've had for quite some time to build a piece of technology that can coordinate one's life and really is able to support the one man enterprise, the one woman enterprise, and to manage the totality of all the relationships, partnerships, communities that come into your life. Um, and we're not talking about CRM here. Um, we're talking about a really advanced system that is able to really coordinate all your projects and tasks in the moment. Because life just comes at you. And it's just a deluge of information for those of you who are sensitive and, and, and kind of keep up with that. And You'd drown if you were really trying to do it a kind of the old-fashioned way using project management systems, or you know, I've even tried you know more advanced ones. But yeah, you'd you'd, you'd drown. You basically have to have the capacity to manage a constant information, a constant stream of information. So that's what this thing is designed to do. And you'd also die if you had no way of scoping. And so, the overall context here is that. Um, this coordinator um, is able to scope down and really help you focus on the notes that are most important. I have, um, I'm sure you guys have more, but I have 9,000 notes in here. I wouldn't doubt if 7,000 to 8,000 of them are just due to the mass digitization I did of 40 years of my life um, that I started literally last year. It took me about six months to finish. Uh, probably uh, to be accurate, probably nine months to finish. So the last three months have been a little bit more pure in regards to how I use uh, Evernote, and it might be interesting to get that statistic in regards to how many I've created in just the last three months. And that would probably be a little bit more indicative of how I would use it over the next nine months and kind of get the yearly total. Um, I do know that my intake uh, right now, I did pay for premium to do a massive intake of several gigabytes. Uh, I think I think my database is up to 15 or 20 gigs. Um, and I know that the free version is sufficient, 60 megs a month, to be able to do what I need to get done right now. And um, I'm not finding that I need more than that right now. However, I do feel the business model works in regards to getting people started and uh, producing you know, revenue. And I really do feel that there's a there's a place for Evernote business, and uh, but this I will not focus on that. But I will allude to where that actually might work. So this coordinator can be broken down um, into lots of several paradigms. It is meant to. You could think of this parent notebook like a big binder, you know, having lots of sections, and it has 31 sections in it right now. And I'm constantly swapping out sections depending on where my focus is in my life. 
And so if an entire community comes into focus, I'll just throw that into the coordinator and I'll be very conscious of taking sections out because you know, that's how you reduce overwhelm but is by taking large chunks of knowledge out represented by no notebooks in this parent notebook called the, the coordinator. So um, I'm using several paradigms. Uh, I, I'm really, I consider myself a, product, a, a personal productivity expert. I've been trained in um, mission control, um, getting things done. Uh, I've used Franklin planners, I've done paper, I've done digital, um, you know, I've done things that, you know, through Landmark Worldwide. Um, it really is an alm um I don't know if this is the right word, al almogam, uh, like a kind of a mixture of all of these paradigms together. And the unique thing, which I could show in a later video if you're interested, is I can see different views of my life depending on the paradigm I choose. And it could be anything from the getting things done view to um, the wheel of life. Uh, you know, there are all different ways to look at your life. And, and, and there no one way is right. So could you design a system that allowed you to look at different perspectives because each perspective has value? So <laughs> that's what I've accomplished here. And a lot of it does center around the whole idea of a Franklin Covey compass. Uh, with the rigor of something like getting things done. Uh, th those are very two dominant paradigms here. Um, I'm very... I, I'm, I very much count on a wiki type of paradigm, a very social commons type of paradigm, or a creative commons kind of paradigm, so that all this information can get stitched together. So there are lots of cross-links through through, you know, through, throughout this entire system. And to help, uh, to kind of borrow a phrase from um, uh, the explorers, uh, the exploration, uh, it, it's it's really designed for sense making, in, in many ways. So, um, again, I can get into um, this in more detail later. Uh, the next major parent notebook, which is related to this inventory notebook, is this experiment that I ran to stand for a community house in West LA. And I went as far as to design a physical paper community manual with resources in it. Uh, I have some history in actually documenting resources on, on the web, uh, especially through the wiki, uh, on resources in West LA or Thailand or, or Japan. And this time the focus was more on how do I manage all my stuff. I've collected so much stuff for 40 years. I'm just going to digitize it all and just toss it, throw it away, um, sell it, put it in a sharing economy, let people borrow it, whatever. And then there's stuff that you wanted to keep, of course there's stuff that you use and you're like, wow, that was really, that's really good, I'd like to buy it again. So what could I do to kind of manage that whole process? And so this manual right here, um, or this parent notebook, is a little bit more about um, what is the face to someone who wanted to manage the property of, you know, this property in West LA. And this one is a little bit more focused on the world of stuff, the story of stuff, as some people put it. And it was my best attempt to basically create an inventory management system, an asset management system, with zero training on enterprise systems. I, decided to just create it from scratch and see what it would come up with. It's got 43 notebooks in it because it's got all kinds of context in it from the kitchen, you know, to, to, to what have you. Um, that's all I want to say about that. Um, this Burning Man um, parent notebook, the reason why it I've chosen a community, you know, to kind of stand on its own is it's very much part of my life and it's an example of an organization that reinvents itself yearly at an annual festival. So there's one notebook per year that I've gone. And, you know, if I were assisting, you know, maybe over the web, I would create one for each year, you know, even if I didn't go to the event. And, you know, each sub notebook, aka year or theme, is, is kind of its own world. Sure, there's this totality of Burning Man, but really there's enough information within each year to kind of act on its own. 
So I created a model uh, of what that might look like here. And it's a very simple model. It's based on all the things that I've collected you know, over the years with intent to let it go. The next community I highlight is Dance Labs. Um, dance Labs is uh, an organization committed to expressive dance and providing tools uh, to help people passionate about dance uh, really be effective out there and uh, have the effective tools to be able to, to, to kind of promote and, and have all the dancers and all of these people who love dance want in their lives. It's not about performance, it's about expression dance. It's about just getting out there and dancing and actually finding your dance. So I've been, uh, a, vol I've been a volunteer um, helping run this organization for uh, over uh, 13, you know, 12 to 13 years now. And I've seen all the different faces and reinventions of dance labs over the years. So it's just fascinating to me. So fascinating that I put an entire diagram, one page diagram together to kind of chart the history of this organization. And so um, the point being here is um, leading the research and development for dance labs uh, and standing for dance innovation and really supporting all the amazing um, ideas and dance out there. Um, take something to kind of manage all that information. And it's not like we're a full-fledged organization or nonprofit or, or you know, for-profit enterprise or whatever. No, this is a volunteer organization and someone has to, someone's got to pull all this information together. So this is my best attempt at managing the design process and the research process and all the different, intele all the intellectual property of Dance Labs, which by the way is under the Creative Commons. So um, that's what this is. This is something I envision moving into Evernote business. And um, I, that time will come when we begin to formalize this effort. So, um, and if you're interested in supporting Dance Labs, please definitely contact me. Um, let's see, I'm gonna actually jump here because it's, a last, it's another organization. Um, the Landmark stack is very different. It's not so much that this is a stack for Landmark Worldwide. Um, I've been a participate in, per participant in this education, this transformational education, for about 13 to 14 years. And I've taken a variety of courses and gotten so many insights um, that it's important for me to kind of keep all that information. It's like going to college for 13 years. And I feel like I, I always joke that I got a PhD from Landmark. Um, you know, it was just today, this morning, that I just talked about a course I did in Tokyo, for example. It's really great to be able to have easy access to that information and, and, and really be able to just send it to someone who, who wants to see it. So um, it's not that I'm trying to run Landmark in any way. It's not that I work for Landmark. It's just as any educational institution, you're going to have notes. Everybody has notes. One person, and, 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 and it's, 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 it's actually has its foundation in textbooks or, uh, you know, in the case of Landmark, there's a lot of research involved in actually designing these programs. So this stuff is actually very useful to reference, you know, to this day. And so it, it justifies its own stack. And I envision that um, Landmark graduates have their own stacks and that there's a network of all this information and you could begin to discover common insights with other landmark graduates. And that's, I could feel that there could be a landmark Evernote app for all I know. Um, so if you're interested in that, please contact me. Um, let's see. Information flow. So let's talk about these two journal stacks. I have different journals, um, everything from a research journal to a dance labs journal to uh, a diary uh, to journals on relationships, uh, I have a creative writing journal. That's what this is. Um, Evernote has this capability to see all the pages across all journals and you get this kind of idealism of seeing all your journal pages over a lifetime. That would not be very practical in the real world. Um, you would have a hard time finding information. It's a lot easier to just pick up your work journal and find work-related stuff. It's just how we work in the real world. 
the power that an electronic medium provides is that it provides you that idealism and it provides you that focus. So there's 10 journals. I, I, I don't know if there's 10. There's at least eight in here. Um, this one sits on its own just because I did experiment with a vJournal app. Um, I don't use it anymore. If you're listening vJournal, I would be happy to talk to you about why. Um, but it's here. It required its own notebook. And if I could actually just specify vJournal in here, that would have been my preference. Um, let's see. All right. We didn't talk about inside jobs and on the clock and resource base. So let me go ahead and tie these together. Um, okay, fundamentally, I, I operate in a resource-based economy. Um, it definitely has a relationship to a, relation, a relationship-based economy, as the Rex, Rexpedition um, is a champion for. And it definitely is a move away from being hourly and on the clock, kind of this check-in and check-out paradigm, and moving towards, you know, we all have resources, and whether it's money or not is not the issue. If we could see a world in, that's based on energy, um, and the energy we have, the capacity we have to generate that, then our world would just be a lot better off. Uh, and that's just my opinion. Um, the only reason Inside Jobs is here is because I have worked for corporations, and I never knew that I think my heart really sits in being resource-based. So I always felt like I was just someone that was inside an organization and was just collecting information and just, you know, I, 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 it didn't really matter what my role was, I just, I just did it. That's what mattered to me. I had the energy to do it as a young person and I just did it. Now, the problem inside um, any organization, whether you're resource-based or not, and especially in one where you're getting paid, especially in a corporate context, is you're paid to do the job that you're asked to do. So um, that's why this kind of had this seeming that it, of an inside job because I always seemed to be given a hat that it was fun for a while, but I would, you know, in the, in the spirit of discovery, you always discover new things. And of course, um, I had a gap in how to get from A to B. You know, here's the job I had today, so how do I kind of train someone or, uh, you know, or do whatever I need to do to be able to transition from the job I'm in to where I want to go, where I'm really clearly inspired. So. This is kind of a record, this stack of all of that, that world of learning how to do that. Um, this probably represents my early consulting years, uh, the first 10 years in fact, um, of being hourly and really learning, you know, to value my time on, a, on an hourly basis. This represents where I really want to be in regards to managing all my communities and, and partners. and. This is the this is a stack that definitely I, I kind of pull communities out and put it into my coordinator as I bring focus to it on an either day to day basis or a weekly basis or a quarterly basis or an annual basis. So it's it, you know you could think of like if you were an operating system you know you're swapping these processes in and out of this coordinator you know as you have the energy as you have the resources you know just like an operating system has limited resources. So. Um, I very much think like a hardware engineer. I think like a um, like a CPU, and I acknowledge that as in this vessel called my body, I've got limited resources, and this is how I manage it. So um, that's what I want to talk about in the philosophy of that. Um, this raw note stack. I told you I had a. Uh, I went through a phase of digitizing 40 years of my life. There's a lot of this stuff that just wasn't worth taking the energy or the time to sort immediately. And so this is digitization of all my Franklin planners from my early days, you know, back in the 90s. And, uh, you know, it's just raw data. It's just it's literally, it, it, I don't know how to say it any other way. Uh, so if you talk about big data as it exists in this implementation, there's a huge chunk of it right here. This just goes unprocessed. As a science, I consider myself a scientist, um, or at least a researcher, and um, it matters to me to have the automation and the mechanisms to process through these raw notes. 
Evernote has a capacity to actually do searches and do operations on all these notes that some kind of automaton could actually sort and with a, with a new understanding probably resort all this information. That, you know, that's what I envision with this system right here, this whole entire Evernote system. So this is an anchor for that future. Um, these two notebooks right here, reference by areas and reference by pool, are, are definitely related. Um, this is a little bit easier to understand um, by area. It's like having a filing cabinet. And it's just like having a different folder, one for your finances, one for your career, one for your family, you know, whatever. It, 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 it's, it, it's, it's very focused. Um, reference by pool is a little bit more ambiguous. And it, it ties into this desire to have this interface kind of, I'm sorry, this system interface with, with, with the rest of my life, the people in my life. So there are pools of information and they can be temporary and they can be empty. They can be considered queues or stacks uh, for your computer scientists. And, um, you know, in, in many ways, uh, here's a very specific example. I could create a pool um, just for a virtual assistant. Anytime an item shows up in that pool, um, there's a communication out to someone or, or whatever you hired your, this virtual assistant to handle. And so in that way, you don't need to have, all you need to do is have a virtual assistant on the bench who gets a notification that that pool suddenly has 10 items in it and time to go to work for a couple hours. And that's what I envision that the, the, the item, that the, the, the sub notebooks in this stack represent because each notebook could be kind of handed off to a different pool or a different assistant, for example. And I don't want to just kind of um, boil it down to just assistance here. I mean, we all assist each other. We're all in service of each other. So I don't mean that in a very degrading or, or way. Um, I imagine as a community, as we interface each other, and we all are our kind of one man enterprises, or one woman enterprises, um, that these cues work with each other. They're shared cues or whatever. So we, uh, I myself might want to look into your pool or have access to your pool, and if I have the time, I will wholeheartedly, you know, process that pool and, you know, write up an article and 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 post it in your blog, for example. But if I don't have the time, hopefully someone else can address that pool. And if you want to hire a virtual assistant, great, you know, handle that pool, these pools, however you want. That's the whole intention around this notebook right here. And finally, um, I let I saved the best for last. Uh, Venus Rockets is. Uh, a term that came up from a good friend of mine and it's a dedication to all the amazing women out there in the world who really stand in their power they really shape a new future for women and they inspire other women they inspire us men uh, they have a high degree of integrity they know their boundaries and they have a sense of how to manage their, the partnerships in their life and make it work and so I really personally honor these women. And it's a very and if you're a woman listening to this, this if you made it this far, this is definitely a thank you to you. It it is my heart to you, and I thought this would be a very unique community to support because I myself am not a woman, unless I checked. So um, this notebook or this 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 stack of notebooks is meant to kind of organize that effort. And I'm realizing it's very distinct from trying to organ organize this community dedicated to dance or a very immensely large community out there at large, you know, called Burning Man or anything else that I talked about here. And there's just a lot of creative energy that comes from that, 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 that comes from women. I mean, they are creators by nature. And so it's inevitable. That that I that woman will take leadership in this space around Evernote, um, because they'll realize its power. They'll realize its power to handle the details and to handle all that creative energy out there. And so, in many ways, I guess I've just discovered that's my commitment behind Evernote. And so, this is a call to action to any of you women out there who really. Um, are aligned with this vision, who understand the totality of everything that I've shared over the last 10, 15, 20 minutes. So if you're a yes to this, I really want to hear from you.
because I, I really want to build a system with you. And I myself don't claim to have all the answers. So this also represents a willingness to start over, start from scratch, and to create something in partnership with you. So if you heard anything inside anything that I shared, regardless whether you're a woman and you're interested in Venus rockets or not, or you're a man who wants to support Venus rockets, or you are someone interested in Dance Labs or Burning Man or Landmark, just contact me. Even if you're a techie and you see some possibility in building software around um, the, all the data that's been collected, I want to hear from you because this is just the beginning. I have so much data out there beyond just Evernote, and Evernote has been the system to tie it all together. And there's more integration work to do, and we have to bridge the past in regards to people who still, uh, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong, but there's a whole network of people, community of people who still would prefer to work, you know, in files and folders. And, you know, there are advanced systems like the brain out there. So. Um, and then there's even more advanced systems like Protege out there that, 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 that handle ontologies. So I want you to know that I, I have a vision and a handle on all of it and that I can't do this alone. And that um, if you see an opportunity to work together on this, I'm interested in hearing from you. So without trying to beat a dead horse here, <laughs> contact me. You can comment below or you can contact me uh, directly. You can go to chinaret.com. You'll find various paths to contact me or you can look through my portfolio and I welcome a communication from you. Uh, I love to talk to you. So thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. I hope you got something out of this. I hope it was insightful. If you'd like to share what you got out of this, I'd love to hear from you. If you have specific questions, please comment below or subscribe. And uh, I will look forward to actually posting uh, follow-up videos to actually explain, uh, you know, in detail any part of the system that you're interested in, whether it's Evernote or whether it's something that I mentioned that's outside of Evernote. So um, I love you all, and thanks for listening.